Wake your ass up or take a damn nap. And we're the three best friends that anybody could have. It's time. You were t- I mean, Sean, you were twerking. That's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> Murph, don't be a dick all your life. This is uh, one, of, one of the more fun podcasts I've ever done. Hey, I'll tell you what. If you're not talking about sports in the man cave, you, no, I bet not. So you got a bed. That's it. <laughs> Coach, are you ready to announce a starting quarterback? Yeah, Hudson Carr is going to start Saturday uh, against Louisiana. Casey will play in the game, um, and then we'll continue to evaluate from there. But that's the direction we're going to go in this weekend. Here we go. Episode 88, Stories Inside the Man Cave. And we will have more about uh, UT, their season opener Saturday against Louisiana. And all I'm going to say and our guest here in episode 88, uh, Chooks and Wabaco. Uh, don't sleep on Louisiana. They're ranked for a reason, and it's going to be hot. And they train in Louisiana and Texas in that heat. So anyone thinking that Texas is going to run away with this, I, I believe you're sadly mistaken. And Chooks, I guess you could say longtime friend between the two of us now since I've been back in Austin. Welcome to Stories Inside the Man Cave. Yeah, appreciate you having me. Absolutely. Uh, well, one thing about Chooks, one, uh, and you are the second Chooks in your family. Uh, first off, the your name, and 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 you and I have joked about this. How many times have people mistaken your name, and you have to go back and correct them and say, "Do it? Do you need the phonetics of my last name?" Yeah, all the time. I mean, you you, you just messed up the last name. You get what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> but Did I it, really? It, yeah, it's it's Chooks Wabuko. Wabuko. I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, but it is what it is. I, I get it. But so <laughs> I mean, it's been like that forever. So yeah. <laughs> oh my God, the backstory yeah. for yeah. Chooks uh, Wabuko uh, the second. Uh, his son Chooks the third uh, at Texas Tech was a phenomenal athlete and football player at uh, Huddle High School. Steve Van Meter was the coach then. Of course, uh, the, the thing about you that you started was heart over height, that movement, and right. got chooks. But you are pretty much a guy who is a well-respected trainer, speed and agility. It, it, speed is everything. Talk about your resume, how you got started, and really how you've really made a name and established your brand in this that, that industry, so to speak. Well, I mean, um, I guess you could say I got started back when I started coaching Little League because right. those ended up being the kids that I ended up training, you know, when it came down to them coming into high school. So, I mean, I had been a youth coach in the Austin area, you know, coming through Delwood since, you know, three little chooks was, um, you know, four years old. So now he's 20. So it's been 16 years, you know, I coached Jalen Ellis as a kid who's now at Baylor. You know what I'm saying? Deion Collins, uh, who killed you know lbj all these records and broke you know in the austin area so i mean just so many kids on and on you know jalen watermeyer who's now at um texas a and m you know so just they were all on the same team those kids coming up but um it's, it really got serious in the training world for me just when um you know troops was a big time baseball player and um you know all through middle school coming up in high school and then he started getting training himself you know and then i started looking at it and started saying hey i'm yeah, he needs he needs a little bit more of this, and you know, it, so I just got into it. And fortunately, I was had some friends that um played in the NFL, and they were giving me their secrets. You know, Terrell Brown, Aaron Ross, you know, Michael Griffin, and them. They would all train back back at home. Uh, Derek Johnson. So they just gave me some tips, and even you know, Tim Crowder. I would go out there and train with those guys, and um just work these high school about to be high school kids. Just started working them like um NFL players, and it started working out it has become such a huge industry and austin in my opinion you'll correct me if i'm wrong austin has become just blossomed over the last five to seven years you have a lot of current and former professional athletes who call austin home and a lot of them uh, you take a piece from that number of people there are quite a few guys who are similar to you who offer those types of services and training youth 
college and professional athletes. Moving forward on your brand, I mean, your resume includes a lot of current pro athletes, right? Yeah, definitely. Current pro and guys about to go pro, especially because the, the, the big movement that we really started in Austin was in that 2019 class where, yeah, yeah where, you know, where you had Garrett and Elijah, Chase and Chooks and all those guys. So that was really, um, you know, what, what we started focusing on, you know, just putting exposure on the kids in Austin because it really it's always been good trainers in Austin. Yeah. There's always been good athletes in Austin. It's just the exposure wasn't being put onto the athlete to where they understood that there's more, you know, guys down here in Austin that you need to come check out. And once we started getting people like you, you know, to come bring the cameras out and really put, you know, the exposure on these kids and put them out there on TV and making sure people were seeing them, then that's when it started just really booming, you know. I mean, now one thing about you, I know we've talked about this that I love because, you know, there's not many people for me. And I joke about it because uh, I'm secure in it. Is uh, you and I can see eye to eye, and I joked with uh, Chuk a second that we could see eye to eye. You know that heart over height, and and um, that was something that I related to, and it was a great story uh, right, right, with right. the heart over height, and it and it's true, and 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 then that leads me to this part of the discussion that FBS programs in college, even NFL, they have their prototype that they go after whether it be speed, strength, size. Why is that such a big deal now, especially when FBS programs, when you have, you should be going after true football players, so to speak? Uh, it's, I think, just to be honest, because it's, you know, it's such a big boy game that so many yeah. guys are so big that um, if you if you're not big enough to take you know people landing on you over and over and over you don't you know then it's kind of like damn I wasted a scholarship on somebody that I knew was going to eventually break so right. you get it in the physical you know uh, sense of it um, but you're right once again if you're a baller you have guys out here that have done it you know over over the time but it's it's kind of like you've got to land in that right situation right you know you you know I, there's a lot of teams that have you know small guys and you know but it's just you got to land in that right situation and be used if you're not being utilized and if coaches you know aren't, aren't using the way that you're best used then it just just ain't gonna work out for you so, let's so take, that's, that's yeah one of, uh, that's one of those things you just kind of you got to find a place that has a plan for you as an athlete and then you got to roll with that if you if you're really a baller so uh, one guy that uh, you and i because because of you and uh and Hutto and Coach Van Meter and Brad LaPlante. Uh, and I had the privilege of getting to know Chase Griffin. Uh, that guy's bigger than the game, actually. Uh, at UCLA, uh, was it, I think, was what was the Gatorade Texas High School Football Player of the Year? Right. That was, was that two or three years ago? That was three, two years ago, three years ago. Yeah, 2019. 2019, yeah. yeah. These years are going by quickly. Yeah. And it's not my age. Just uh, I, I forget to lose track, but when you look at what he's doing at UCLA, I, along with other people, are wondering why is he not getting that opportunity at UCLA? Is that something that you have any knowledge of or that you can even talk about remotely? Nah. Well, unfortunately, no, um, none, because it, UCLA is so far away. And I don't have anybody inside at UCLA, you get yeah. what I'm saying, being able to tell me anything. But um, you know, if if you if from an outsider looking in, it's it's just one of those things where they have a guy there that they want to push, obviously, and um they're gonna keep pushing him until until they can't push him anymore right. as their you know, as their main guy. And I don't know, I mean, on the on the other side of that, I, Chase Griffin is the biggest thing UCLA has going on right now. Right. I mean, and which, which, which is not like a downplay on, on them, but it's, it's huge for them because he's putting them on like back on brand where they should be because UCLA is a huge brand. Yes. Yeah. It's, like, it's kind of like y'all must've forgot. Well, here, let me remind y'all how big of a brand that is. And then through pure excellence, he's just, 
you know, continuously just winning, you know, awards, you know, he, he won the top award that student athlete can get. I mean, he's on, you know, panels with the governor, the mayor, of, you know, California the, and the, the, the mayor of Los Angeles. So just to be doing those things that he's doing, graduating in two years, it's like, I mean, he's teaching the way of, you know, of, of what, you know, what it is to be just pure excellence. Um, he, he, that's the thing, you know, with the name image likeness, Chase Griffin has a brand that any Fortune 500 company, any local business in L.A. and here in uh, Austin, Hutto, any of the surrounding area would love to partner with because the name image likeness provides a significant opportunity that uh, student athletes should have received 20 and 30 years ago. Oh, yeah, yeah. Compensation. Yeah. But you and I will agree. And I, I joked about it, but I'm serious when I say Chase Griffin could be the president in 2038. Is that far fetched? No, it's not. I mean, it's it's not not at all. I mean, he's 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 built for it. I mean, he's he's a leader, you know, and um, and he's 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 a, you know a godly kind of guy, you know. So he's he's just he's just he's special. He's different. That's that's the, you need, if you guys have never had an opportunity follow, uh, well fo follow Chukes as well on Twitter, but also uh, Chase Griffin, uh, profound. Uh, wise beyond his years, and someone who is quite the ambassador for college football and what oh, yeah. everything that's great about honestly all of college athletics because he yeah. he is united. He does his own podcast right. and unites right. that that you right. what is it UCLA legacy of athletes present and past. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, no doubt. So for you for your business, um, what is different? Because for you, what you provide, because there's so many guys out there that you have, you provide that has resulted in a proven product, a proven mm. difference. And yes. for athletes, young men and young ladies, you have quite the clientele base, as we mentioned earlier. Mm -hmm. Right. So, yeah, for, for, for my deal, I mean, it's, it's just, you know, bringing in and getting the the families and the kids to understand what it really takes. And like you said, once you prove it, you know, then you can actually let people, let people know what it really takes. You know, at first it was like, you know, who, well, who have you trained? You know, <laughs> you know, one of those things, right. But once you get, once you have these guys that you train and that you're taking it across the country and that you're walking into head coaches office and things like that. And then once you do it with your kid, the way I did it with my kid first with Chooks being, you know, uh, for a walk on and then with, with Ted now earning scholarships that he's earning. Um, it's those are two different, com completely different ways. So, um, yeah, you can kind of help a family and help a kid understand that, look, it can be done. It, everybody's not going to do it the same way, but it can be done. And then once again, it kind of it's one of those things like heart over height, you know, it yeah. doesn't. You know, because that's the main thing that these schools are looking for is the is are you built a certain way? Yeah. And if you are, then we can go from there and let's see your film. And then if the film matches up, let's see your grades and you know, one of those things, you know. But if 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 all that doesn't match up, then you gotta figure out a way. And you know, the, where there's a will, there's a way. One hundred percent. Yeah, let's uh, let's uh, elaborate on your youngest son. Um, he is it's fun, sure. it's been fun watching him. Uh, on Twitter, uh, Pittsburgh, University of Pittsburgh. Right. What is it about him, him and that that's a perfect marriage at the moment? And through conversations, it seems like uh, the Pitt Panthers football program is where he will end up. Well, yeah, definitely. Well, Pitt was just a great place um, when we visited. We had never been there before. But when we visited, we understood where we were going, uh, who had been, you know, through the university, like, Dan Marino, right. you know, uh, you know, Tony Dorsett, Tony, yeah. yeah, you're gonna Larry Fitzgerald, Real Revis, Aaron Donald, Curtis Martin, people. yeah, right, <laughs> Curtis Martin, right. So these are these are some of the top guys in their position in the NFL. You know, they're they're th those are Hall of Famers. We're talking about Mike Ditka. You know, they're right. so it's like, you know, you could see that Pittsburgh was such a professional city, a professional place that they, regardless if you made it to the NFL, you were going to be a professional in life. So that was kind of like uh, like what I saw going into Pittsburgh, where it's like, okay, well you can. There's so much to do. It's a it's a really good city. There's a eight Fortune 500 companies there. So it's like 
you don't have to leave Pittsburgh after. Yeah. You know, if, if you get your you know degree and things there, you can work. It's uh, it's, it's not like some of these country towns down here in Texas where it's like that's the first thing you do when you graduate there is is get out of town. Yeah. You know, Austin, Austin's fortunately such a beautiful place. You know, Very much. you know, it's it's kind it's kind of similar in, in how I saw it. But then it's an NFL factory, and you know they have a plan for chess. So it's um, going in there with having a plan for you and they, them having coached so many NFL players and then sharing the facility with an NFL team, they're, them being the only university in the nation that shares a facility with an NFL team. So it was one of those things where it's like, eh, this is, this is, if it's good enough for the Steelers, it's good enough for you. <laughs> That's a good, good point. Right. I didn't think about it that way. Yeah. You know, you, you going through this, you and, and through uh, the recruiting process for Chooks the third, all the knowledge and wisdom you've gained through that, those processes, um, everything, and then through you training, what would you advise these young student athletes now who have aspirations to play uh, collegiately on the next level? I know we're talking about football primarily, but at any sport, what do you tell them like through the three main points that they really need to pay attention to as far as marketing themselves and preparing those their bodies and their routines, so to speak, that you can offer too. Well, yeah, I mean, it all depends where you're at. You know, if you're if you're just waking up as a junior and saying, "Hey, I, I want to do it now," or if you're an eighth grader, because it's it's different points, you know. So it's different. It's a different point in time for people. But it definitely, I mean, the, the grades, the grades, yeah. and, and people will say, you know, this all the time, and then you'll hear somebody say, "I have a 3.0." Well, I'm talking about good grades, like get good grades, not a 3.0. That's not that's not the worst, but now you've excluded yourself from so many places that you can't go to with a 3.0. So if you really want to go to your dream school and they require a 3.5, then you're you can't you can't make your dream come true that way. You know, you're gonna have to you know go a different route through it. But I mean, um, just the grades, man. Um, be conditioned, uh, be coachable. All those things that people always tell you live that you know live that and and walk that and, and 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 turn it up to the max right like be prepared like you know when you go out there just be ready be ready to out perform and to you know catch every ball make every play and go five quarters type of things if you're if you're ready and you're a baller someone's someone's going to see you and if you're putting it all together then in your like you said exposing yourself building your brand that's the main thing too work your twitter work your twitter put your brand out there and um, expose yourself. No, that's sound advice. It sounds simple, but creating a routine and, and doing so, it's it's, uh, it's, tough. it's a big difference. Big difference. It's tough because uh, kids don't want they don't want to tweet and get one like. Yeah. But 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 then if, if some if they're sleeping on you, it's because you're sleeping on yourself. You're not putting yourself out there. So so don't sleep on yourself and then complain about oh well they're not giving me a chance. You have to put yourself out there. Go to a camp. Yeah. You know, drive out, find your way to a camp, jump in the car with somebody and get there, you know, make yourself noticeable. And and, and low on the list is of uh, must do's is make an appearance on stories inside the man cave. That, that may help. That may <laughs> right, promote right, the brand right. a little bit. <laughs> uh, you're not, yeah, you're, yeah, you're right on that. Yeah. Yeah. Sukes, I, I, well, this is our arguably the best part of the podcast. The uh, Jimmy Saxton State Farm Insurance Agency man cave story. What is is there a story that you share with your boys? Uh, even the the legendary him legend himself, the father of Chase Griffin. Is there any stories you guys share that man you guys about your family or anything athletic related or just anything about maybe who you are that really you love to talk about that uh, just really sums up maybe something that was really humorous by any chance. Well, Sean, I mean, I talk so much that it's like, I mean, they, they, they hear it, they hear it all. I'm always talking, you get what I'm saying? So it's one of those things where, I mean, they, they, they've been around me so much, you know, my boys, they've been around me and I'm around them all the time. It's right. like, you know, I don't, it's not like I clock in, you know, to, to do anything other than, tra but then train, you know, or to help somebody out with some, you know, some school things and things like that. But I mean, so that. They're, they're with me all the time. They hear, they hear, you know, they've heard from others. I don't really talk about myself playing, you know, things like that, but I'm not big on the stories. But like I said, they, they hear me all the time. <laughs> <laughs> well, I tell you what, we've got more 
of this episode coming up here because uh, Chooks is going to stick around with us for a short segment two where we're going to break down this college football season opening weekend because it's big time here in Texas. I mean, it's big. We love it across the country. Uh, but here in Texas, we do things differently. We do things differently on the college level, but it is a, always a big time a weekend here in, in Austin, Texas, like it is so many other places. So, Chooks, uh, we're going to take a quick break, but when we come back, man, you and I are going to discuss everything college football and get your take on a few of those hot-button topics involving the Longhorns. So stick around for segment two of episode 88. For all of your insurance needs, look no further than our primary sponsor, Jim Saxton State Farm Insurance Agency. The ATX OG has been insuring Austin for over three decades. And get this, Jim Saxton is a Longhorn legacy. He is the son of the late, great James Saxton, who was a Heisman finalist. Be sure to give him a call or better yet, visit his website, saxtoninsurance.com and tell him that the stories inside the Man Cave Boys Recommended you. Welcome back. Hey, Chooks, you knew hey. I had to give props to my alma mater on that last one, Stephen F. Austin. Yeah. Going to the WAC, leaving the Southland Conference. Yeah, yeah. Playing Tarleton. Oh, my God. It is a big weekend uh, for every all of us who really – college football is a big part of our lives. What game are you really looking forward to? What's your plan for Saturday uh, for game day? Well, I'm, yeah, I'm going to watch the Longhorns, of course, you know, yeah. being here in Austin. Right. Excited to watch that game. I know a lot of the guys personally on the team, um, either through the training or just them coming up in, in the same class and from the area with, you know, troops playing, things right. like that. So, yeah. Now, now, speaking of, you know, how we we had Steve Sarkeesian, the first-year Longhorns head coach. He named the starter for game one, uh, mm -hmm. Hudson Card, and but then said Casey Washington will play. Well, uh, uh, Casey, yeah, Casey Thompson. Casey, I say Casey Washington. That's he's from. Uh, he was yeah. at Illinois. He's from uh, Pfluger. He's, yeah, he's, he's still Thompson. at Illinois. He's back there. He's at Illinois, wearing number fourteen. Casey. That's yeah. yeah it was a good kid. Yeah, he's a great, great kid. Yeah, great kid. That's funny. I covered Casey Thompson. Um, and well, his brothers when I was in Oklahoma City, yeah, South yeah. Moore High School, uh, and, and Casey was in a junior high. Then I left Austin, came friends with his dad. Yeah. And but that's a great story. And I, and I, I don't want to speculate that why they made that decision. Was it to keep Casey here and not get in the transfer portal? What do you think? Oh, I mean, Casey was my seven on seven quarterback with troops playing, you know, with fast Houston. So, yeah. um, uh, I, I know Casey, um, I, he's good. And, um, but I also, I also know Hudson card. I saw him yeah. play before. Saw him in high school. And I think a lot of people haven't seen Hudson play. So they, um, they're just assuming maybe he's just gonna be dropping back and throwing the ball and trying to trying to make throws, which he can. Yeah. But he's an ex receiver, you know, yeah. an ex wide receiver, and I literally I don't think people know that. So when he gets to moving and running around, he's gonna make some plays with his legs. Right. So he can run too. So I mean, I think like coaches have been saying that they're gonna give both of those guys um, an opportunity to play. You know, I don't know how, but I think um, we'll see we'll see them both, and then I, I guess. It'll play itself out. Yeah, you know, that's how football does. That's exactly right. Because I, you know, I saw 
when I was in the media for uh, here in Austin um, for K View, I, I saw Hudson when he was a youngster. Moved up to varsity pretty quick at an, you know, at that great program at Lake Travis for Hank Carter. Right. Um, and I'll be honest with you, I'm guilty of, of – he he is major Division One college football talent. He should be on the field. But I, I was one of those guys that said, no, I just don't see it at quarterback. He is a he should be a receiver. He should be on the field. But now I'm hey, that tells you how accurate my opinion is. And don't purchase any stock in my opinion. <laughs> um, and to what you said, Chooks, Derek Kerstetter, the offensive line, I think he pretty much sums up and he's on board with on, on, it parallels with what you said about uh Hudson, who I think is a tremendous guy, a tremendous athlete. Uh this is what Derek said about um Hudson Carr Hudson's a good dude man he he's came in and he's he's done his part he's constantly been working and kind of just taking it day by day to to improve his craft and be the best quarterback they can be he's he's really just came into his own as this year and I'm, I'm excited to see like his progression throughout the season man it's been it's been fun to watch a guy that's from the Austin area come in and just be excited about being at the University of Texas and play his butt off that sums it up and as you know, competition breeds excellence because it keeps your game on whatever position you are. I mean, is that – you think that brought the best out of, uh, out of both Casey and Hudson? And then who knows? We could be having a different starter every game. Yeah, I mean, Charles right there too, you know. Right, he right. There and he, he's a baller, you know. You know, I know Charles very well. But, I mean, um, like I said, it, it, definitely they're in competition. It's just because they didn't know who was going to be the quarterback. So they're in competition. So, yeah, they, and, and and like I said, I know him. And I saw Casey working. You know, he worked his ass off. And yeah. he, he was balling, I mean. And I, I kind of thought he was going to get it. But then the way, you know, they, they said Hudson was playing. You know, they said they're going to start off with him. So it's one of those things, man. We'll see. It's tomorrow. Yeah. We're going we're yeah. to see. Exactly and, uh, right. Yeah. And, you know, once, like I said, Hudson's so athletic that once you tuck that ball, it doesn't matter if you're a quarterback, running back, well, you turn into a running back. So now once you tuck it and you're running down the field, it's just athleticism now. So, I mean, you can make plays with your legs. You know, we'll, we'll see. Like, two yeah. months, it's going to be exciting. I, I like it. And I and think hot. Very hot. <laughs> yeah, right. I can't believe there's a day game in uh, September in Austin. Uh, one of the guys, I, did you did you by any chance train Joshua Moore, the receiver, or work with him at all? Josh was on our seven on seven team, um, you know. So we, we we took long trips in vans, you know, across yeah. the country. You know, he uh, he had spent some, some time up in IMG. Yeah. We went and played up at IMG and brought him back home. But uh, yeah, so I know those, I know a lot of those guys. You know, Deshaun Jameson, Joshua yeah. Moore, um, Casey, of course. Like I say, Rashawn Johnson, I trained. Uh, Beast. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. that's that's probably their best position right there, running back. They're deep there. Uh, it's unreal. They have some uh, the wealth of riches at certain positions. Well, Joshua Moore. A lot of people, if you follow this story, um, when we're young, we we have all made some decisions we regret. And if yeah. anyone's going to cast a stone, then you need to look in the mirror because Joshua's had some. Yeah. I wouldn't say major mistakes. Just he admits it. I, I love this kid. I love this kid. But listen, uh, Mike Harge, Harbaugh Harge, who's a member of uh, our fraternity here at Stories Inside the Man Cave. Uh, this week he asked Joshua because mm. Joshua was an older veteran mm. receiver and always a threat to go to the house. Oh, yeah. Um, this is what Josh said when Harge was asking him about heading into this season after what all he's experienced yeah. in life. Here we go. You've gone through a lot since you've been at the University of Texas, the ups, the downs, the highs and the lows. What do you think the biggest experience that you've had that helped you grow to be the player that you are today? It's a good question. Um, man, I've learned a lot. You know, I'm I don't regret anything at all. Anything, everything that I went through, you know, I've, I've learned some valuable lessons from it, you know good things and bad things, you know. Uh, but the most important thing I've learned is to never get too high with yourself, never get too low with yourself. You know, always stay level-headed, always stay humble, you know, just no matter how, no matter what happens in life, you know, don't lose yourself. Because if you lose yourself, you know, it's, hey, 
that's, that's a pretty pretty deep hole you put yourself into. So it's a thing I, I took uh, away from my suspension my sophomore year, it was. Um, you know, I had a lot of people that turned it back on me, a lot of people that, you know, gave up on me, even, you know, some of my, co my closest family members. But the people that mattered the most, they're still here with me, you know? So just never get too high, never get too low. Yeah, you have to apologize the alarm in the background here, but uh, that young man is going to be working for a, he's going to be, I, I, he's a guy that could be a right hand man to a CEO after his football career ends, whenever that may be. We may be talking about that a uh, decade from now, but after hearing that, another layer of greatness adds to the type of kid that Joshua Moore is. Yeah, Josh is a good kid. Like I said, I know him, his twin brother, Jordan. Uh, and, you know, so, yeah, they're, they're, they're good people, good country boys, Yoakum. <laughs> From Yoakum, yeah, that's yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, that, and, and it's down, that's headed down toward Refurio, yeah, all those yeah. guys where uh, – Hallettsville area. Yeah. Oh, El Campo, yeah. all that out there. El Campo, there's some uh, great talent there always has been. And you go to Quero. Yeah, right. Uh, you know, as we talk about the opponent for Texas, Louisiana, back-to-back -back 10, 11 win seasons. Mm -hmm. There's a school formerly known as Louisiana Lafayette, and they get pissed off if you call right. them Louisiana Lafayette. Yeah, Chad got that offer. University said, of Louisiana. Yeah. If Chad got that offer and they said, don't call yeah. us that. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. And, you know, back in our day, it was southwest Louisiana, southwestern uh, yeah. Louisiana. Yeah. But they've always been – a really competitive football program. Mm -hmm. And they've got a quarterback, man, that Levi Lewis, who is on every national watch list. Have you seen him? Yeah, I've seen him. They lost their two running backs, I think. Yeah. But um, but yeah, and then they got a good coach too, you know. I mean, yeah. they got yeah, they got yeah, they got a whole yeah, but the quarterback is good though. It is really good. And this is uh Demarian Demarvian Overshone. Uh, Agent Zero, as we as he likes to be called, and he's earned that respect. This is what he and the Longhorn defense are preparing for, and before what they expect to see on Saturday afternoon. I see a very uh, you know put uh, a well put together uh, group. You know they got twenty one of their twenty two starters returning, so you know they know how to play with each other. You know, they're a heck of a football team. You know, you can tell that they, they've been playing together for a while, the way that they move around, the way that they uh, do things offensively. So uh, it's, it's going to be a great game, a great opponent. Okay, so DeMarvian, he knows only a, whenever in front of the camera, only dish out compliments. <laughs> but are those what he's saying? Do you believe Louisiana is that good, yeah. as I mentioned earlier, to hang with Texas and possibly leave Austin with an upset? I, I do believe they are that good. I mean, they are, you know, they, this is last year, of course, but they beat, you yeah. know, I, Iowa State. Beat them game, hand, handily. Game one. And I mean, um, Iowa State was second in the Big 12. So it's not like Iowa State was just, you know, just anybody. But I mean, I mean, they have a coach from Alabama too. You know, Napier. Napier's from Alabama. He spent what five, six years over there. Um, he's also a winning coach. You know, I think when he was a quarterback at, I think Furman or something like that, he went to a national championship. Yeah. His, his dad was a coach, so it's not, he's not new to this. <laughs> um, he's got a good team. You know, it's a team full of guys that, if I'm not mistaken, Louisiana's got a bunch of. Texas boys on their team too. Yeah. You know? yeah. So I mean, we got some football players over there too. So uh, uh, we'll see. Like I say, I think they can come in here and, and give Texas a good game. And you know, if if you're playing on the field, anybody can win. So yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. You, can, you can go home with a win. Any given day, yes, anybody I mean, can win. Why they play the game? Hey, one thing that uh, I know you love and has always be a part of our lives and that anyone watching this across the country knows how big Texas high school football is. And well, this is what we are talking about now. Chooks. 
Which game here in week two do you have your minds on or your eyes set uh, for this week? Because there are some really good games. Westlake hosting a state power, Euless Trinity. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that, that, that's a big game. Um, well, you know, I, since I have sons that play on Friday night, typically, right. um, I'm, of course, I'm going with Maynard. Versus yeah, Bastrop, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Maynard versus Bastrop out there in, in, in that's, a, that's uh, in an old Bastrop. school rivalry, right? Yeah, yeah. You back in the day, yeah. They were back. Uh, you mean back in your day? No, no. Because <laughs> back in my day, we didn't play them. No, we didn't play them. We played Gidden, Smithville, you know, uh, Hearn, Rockdale, them teams there. But uh, uh, they probably back in Sad in them days, Sad Jackson. Yeah, you know th those days. But uh, yeah, that's 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 gonna be a big one tonight. But I but I always keep an eye on all the local games, you know, especially the, our district, you know, with um, you know Cedar Park and teams like that, just yeah. to see how check up how they're doing. And of course, uh, Westlake is, is is always one to watch. They're one of the better teams in the nation. Man, going for the three peat, man. And uh, have you worked with Cade Klubnik? Nah, I haven't. I'm just you know I, I believe. He is who what everyone thinks he is now, obviously, he's committed so. to Clemson. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I respect the fact that Westlake playing these state powers and the other teams are agreeing to play them. Lake Travis playing another one, Converse Judson. Yeah, yeah. That's big time, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they typically play them in the season. They might match up with them later on. In the playoffs. Mm -hmm. So that the, the, my question there is what it leads to – the next topic, and that is what we witnessed in high school football last weekend, uh, the Bishop Sycamore debacle. <laughs> so I know Todd Dodge at Westlake and, and Hank Carter and other coaches have said, listen, it is really hard to play anybody in the state of Texas who wants to play you when you're at that elite level. So you have to go and play teams from outside of the state sometimes. Right. Um, like the what was it, Bishop Gorman out of uh, Las Vegas back in the day, Shreveport Evangel. Yeah, IMG, um, IMG just played Duncanville this past weekend. Right, I respect that. Yeah, but how do you sum up what you saw? The Bishop Sycamore, uh, pretend football program out of Ohio, ESPN agrees to let them play. <laughs> right, it was horrible, man. And all of a sudden, now their coach is fired. They played two games in three days. What the hell was that? Yeah, no, nah, it was just a scam, big old scam. They were getting money from what I heard. I mean, they said that they pulled out a six-figure loan up under a church's name and were living in a hotel for three months and hadn't paid the hotel. And, you know, t I mean, the teams that are agreeing to pay them pay their expenses, and then they would take the money and, and flip it and do whatever they were doing with it. But um, it's it, that's it's just sad. I mean, that's just a hustle, one of those scams. So somebody got over. It, I'll catch up to them. You think that uh, is and a black guy? Yes, <laughs> I, yeah, I said. Then they lost the game. Bro. Oh man, it was they horrible. Got blew out. So it was like, I mean, not only are you subjecting people to injuries, you, I don't care what level you play. You don't play two football games in three days, but some of those guys are probably going to be injured for a while. Yeah, some of them. I mean, they weren't even on the same skill level. Uh, but some of them were already older than high school athletes. They were just – I don't know what was going on with that. That was It's weird. It, it, it's weird. Mm -hmm. Well, as we end things, this is what we like. This is how we like to end these shows. Hey, Ben, tell me something good. Yep, the voice of uh, Mike Harge's son, the middle, middle child, DJ Harge, providing the Tell Me Something Good – transition uh we it could be current anything chooks tell me something good bro the mayor's gonna win tonight you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is really good Mayor's gonna win tonight <laughs> i like that okay yeah and, and and by the way tell me something good segment is sponsored by our friends on the south side of austin and south, off of south congress and pickle street cosmic coffee and beer garden go still tell our, our friends paulo vasey uh, one of the owners of Cosmic Coffee and Beer Garden, a great place, got a good vibe, good Austin vibe, good coffee, great boozy coffee, great bar, live music, food trucks, man, you got it, waterfalls, everything, just very Austin. Uh, Chooks, I'll, I'll tell you something good, and it takes me back to last week. 
I know you hear this name often and then on a few episodes, but man, I am so proud of kind of my, uh, I call him my little bro or nephew, Jalen Reeves, the quarterback yeah. at Pflugerville High School. For those across the country watching, he's yeah. the son of my best friend who passed away. He and his wife passed away early this year due to COVID, four days apart. And him, Jalen, and his sister, Kyra, who plays soccer at the University of Missouri, mm -hmm. she's, a, she's a beast, too. Mm -hmm. uh, Jalen and Pflugerville High School season opener, um, five combined touchdowns. Yeah. And that, that's something good that has been a feel-good story all week. We got the alarm. That must be signaling us to wrap things up. What do you think? <laughs> hey, it is what it is. <laughs> but you, nice any, any, any parting thoughts? I, I was going to ask you about um, NFL cuts, but we can always talk about that another time. That uh, You know, that's never something good to talk about somebody yeah, right, getting right, cut. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Brother, I appreciate you no doubt. joining us here. And now you're a, a VIP alumni of stories inside the man cave. Is that something that you could possibly put on the bottom of your, of your resume? No doubt. I got you. <laughs> <laughs> appreciate you. Well, well, man, for this guy right here, I want you to say his last name three times. Yeah, the end is silent. Yeah, Wabuko. Yeah, there you go. Wabuko. We go. Go. We got it. Yeah. Four. Yeah. Chooks, Wabuko, and his entire family, great people. And this is all this has been a pleasure, man. And we will see you soon. Right, For no the Man K boys. I appreciate you. Bye. Hey, man, we appreciate you. For the Thanks other for Man K boys and all the alumni, we out. You see the drippy, I'm fitted up. I'm in my car in the giddy up.